Vince McMahon hates tag teams, but you already knew that. Despite the enormous wealth of talent available to them, despite the potential for telling incredible stories with the tag teams like they used to, WWE refuse to give the division a chance. It gets even worse because many times WWE buries them into the ground even more than necessary by splitting them up for no reason whatsoever. Some of these came about as a result of storylines that later went nowhere. Some happened because Vince simply didn't fancy them anymore. Don't bother looking for the reason, because there is none. With that in mind, I'm Adam Wilborn from What Culture, and these are the 10 most pointless WWE tag team breakups ever. Number 10, The Bar. Sheamus and Cesaro, as nonsensical as the initial pairing was, had gone on to become one of the most successful tag teams in modern times. And despite the apathy towards the division, they, the Usos and the New Day ensured that even this barren phase for tag team wrestling in WWE will be remembered fondly by the WWE Universe. This makes their breakup even more bizarre. There was no reason, no storyline, not even an explanation as to why one of the cornerstones of the tag division vision just stopped teaming together. Of course, this was largely forced by Sheamus' injury, which at the time was feared could be career-ending, but surely the least WWE could have done was provide some sort of explanation. Nope. Instead, we were asked to pretend that they didn't even exist. Number 9. American Alpha Coming off the back of an excellent run in NXT, Chad Gable and Jason Jordan debuted on SmackDown following the 2016 draft. They brought their amateur wrestling background and classic tag team psychology to the blue brand and even got off to a great start by having a series of gripping encounters with the likes of the Usos. This would eventually culminate in them winning the SmackDown Tag Team Championships. And that was that, the end of their story. After a two month plus reign, they dropped the titles back to Jimmy and Jay and soon after that, they were split up. Jordan went over to Raw where he was revealed as Kurt Angle's illegitimate son and that always goes well, doesn't it? Before a neck injury, of course, unfortunately put an end to his career. Gable, meanwhile, embarked on a tremendously well thought out long term storyline that saw him go from Matt Wrestling genius to some dude who just gets made fun of because he's short. Number 8. The Dudley Boys During the original brand split in 2002, Devon and Bubba were drafted to separate shows. While it did seem odd WWE would break up one of their premier tag teams, the thought was this might be the beginning of singles pushes for the two men. Yeah. Right. The two floated about in the mid-card before being brought face-to-face -face on a pay-per-view where they eventually came to blows. There was no real long-term feud, and before long, they simply reunited on Raw and continued as part of the tag team division. Hey, at least we got vampire goth priest thing Batista as part of it, and who can complain about that? Number 7. Daniel Bryan and Rowan Daniel Bryan's evil vegan heel run was one of the best wrestling character changes in recent memory. And as weird as it is to say, Rowan definitely did his part in enhancing the act. Bryan was the malevolent yet somehow justified warrior determined on toppling the system, while Rowan provided the muscle that excused Bryan from getting physically involved when he didn't want to, further elevating the heel act. Hence, it was very strange when WWE decided to separate the two. That too by turning Bryan Brian face for some reason. This disappointment was compounded by the fact that when the story began, it was part of the uh, Roman Reigns whodunit angle. The investigation zeroed in on Brian and Rowan before it was eventually revealed that the recyclable one was acting on his own accord and against Brian's wishes. Instead of an epic Reigns Brian feud, we got the Brian Rowan split and the end of a surprisingly memorable partnership. Number six, Too Cool. Yeah, Phil Chambers and I, as the what culture arm of the Too Cool fan club, have never really gotten over this one. The trio of Rikishi, Scotty Too Hotty, and of course the late great Grandmaster Sexay were phenomenally popular with fans. Their famous dance moves and more than decent ability between the ropes captivated audiences throughout their run which makes it even more perplexing as to why WWE chose to split them up. Of course, the main reason was probably Rikishi's impending heel turn. You know, how he would run over Stone Cold Steve Austin for the... for for Triple H, apparently. But given how well that went, it still stands to reason that everyone would have been better off had they remained together. This was also the time that the tag division actually mattered. Remember that. Having Too Cool in the mix, along with the madness created by the likes of the Hardys, Edge and Christian, and the Dudleys, could have added a whole new dimension and made for some thrilling long-term rivalries. 
Sadly, it wasn't to be. Number five, Team Rhodes Scholars. At this point, looking back on most parts of Cody Rhodes' WWE career invokes a case of what the hell were they thinking syndrome. It's doubly true for this particular phase because it was alongside another man who was constantly denied his due in spite of getting over time and time again with just about any kind of gimmick imaginable. But yes, in 2012, the future AEW founder had formed a dastardly alliance with the intellectual saviour of the unwashed masses. And would you know it, they were really good together. It was just a nice and simple heel act that played its part just right. Yet again, however, a team had its plug pulled before going anywhere. At that year's Money in the Bank, Sando turned on Rhodes in order to win the World Heavyweight title Money in the Bank ladder match, and that went well, and the pair would go on to have a feud, but never really fill up any steam. Number four, the Bella Twins. Initially, this made all the sense in the world. In fact, it was a genuine case of WWE trying to make a character evolve. In 2014, because of her connections with Daniel Bryan, Brie Bella storyline quit the company. Enraged, presumably because she did the classic, you can't fire me because I quit routine, Stephanie McMahon began taking her anger out on Brie's sister, Nikki. She was constantly humiliated and punished while her sister simply looked on. Eventually, this led to a SummerSlam match between Brie and Steph where Nikki turned heel and cost her sister the match. Thus far, all good. It just got a little bit weird when Brie lost a match to her now estranged sister and was forced to become her servant. Still, there was hope for a big blow off down the line when this would be resolved once and for all. And then they just made up. Brie helped Nikki win her Divas title match against AJ Lee, after which she simply celebrated with the person who had been making her life miserable for months. All that build and storytelling completely cast aside. Everyone was left scratching their heads and asking why WWE bothered to break them up in the first place. Number three, the Straight Edge Society. Yes, they were technically a stable, but it's more or less the same idea, so it gets a pass. Originally formed in the aftermath of Punk's brilliant rivalry with Jeff Hardy, Punk was joined by Luke Gallows as his muscle, and the duo later recruited Serena and then Joey Mercury for some reason. Their whole shtick was berating people for turning to alcohol and drugs, and despite being villains, their rhetoric was powerful and ultimately well-placed. If WWE had taken full stock in them, this could have led to some amazing high-profile storylines. But as we all know, it wasn't to be. SES engaged in a series of enjoyable mid-card feuds and inevitably disbanded because of internal dissension. There wasn't even any fallout as Gallows and Serena were both released from the company. All that potential, yet yeah, again, all wasted. Number two, Rusev Day. <sighs> How or why Vince McMahon refused to see the brilliance of Rusev continues to baffle fans and critics alike to this very day. The man was a complete performer. He had the character work, the promo, the wrestling skills, you name it. No matter what gimmick WWE gave him, he found a way to make it work. Yet every single time, he had the rug pulled from under his feet. This was never more true than during the Rusev Day run. The Bulgarian brute, alongside Aiden English, was pure gold. From the weird songs hyping up Rusev to the in-ring work, this act had it all. And most importantly, it became wildly popular. Rusev Day was selling out merchandise. The chants were taking over segments they weren't even involved in, and all the signs were loud and clear. Push them, in the words of Cameron Grimes, Stereo! But because it was WWE and they don't like things they can't claim to be their own idea, Rusev and English were never allowed the spotlight they deserved. After a series of tag and mid-card title feuds, the two eventually fell out over some bollocks sex tape angle. There wasn't even any kind of proper feud between the former partners, rendering it all one big waste of time. But could have been worse. Number one, the Iconics. <sighs> You heartless bastard, Vince. How could you? On an episode of Raw, it was just randomly announced that whoever lost the match between the Iconics and the Riot Squad would have to disband. Why was this made? Who made this? And why on earth did the teams agree to this? Look, normally an on-screen breakup 
is at the very least accompanied with some kind of explanation. However, threadbare it may be, at least have them properly fall out or let there be a reason why the two teams would want to put their unions on the line. Yes, in a moment that will live in my memory forever, Ruby Riot and Liv Morgan would go on to win this absurd contest, forcing Peyton Royce and Billy Kay to split. Tom Phillips on commentary then announced this was also the end of their friendship. So either he's a fortune teller or WWE owns the personal lives of their wrestlers too. I wouldn't be surprised to be perfectly honest. Thankfully though, Peyton Royce, whose singles push was the supposed reasoning behind this split, has gone on to do... Oh yeah, oh, you forgot about her, Vince. You forgot about Peyton bloody Royce, you senile old git. Do you see what you've done to me, you decrepit piece of... Infuriating, insulting, and without a doubt, the most pointless breakup in WWE history. And that's our list. Did we miss any out? Let us know in the comment section below. And don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. And subscribe to What Culture Wrestling on either iTunes, Spotify, wherever you get your podcasts from, for daily wrestling podcasts. This has been the 10 most pointless WWE tag team breakups ever. Screw you, Vince McMahon. Thanks for watching. I've been Adam from What Culture, and I'll see you soon.